Well, good morning. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of you online. You're engaging in the chat. I encourage you to do so. I told the folks that are here, I said, hey, um, I need you to be overly engaging. I need to hear you um, because that's how I like to preach, right? We like to engage back and forth. I like to ask questions and, and hear you and, and know that you're awake and all of those things. And so I'm going to trust. I'm going to look at the chat after the service and I'm going to trust and I'm going to see a bunch of comments on there with people engaging, okay? So here's what I want you to do on the count of three, wherever you're at. All right, wherever you're at, whether you're in the room, whether you're on your couch, in the kitchen, whatever, out shoveling snow and you're listening to this, okay? Uh, wherever you're at, on the count of three, I want you to say good morning as loud as you can, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Good morning. Wow. You guys promised to be engaging. Okay, very good. All right, well, if you have your Bible, you can turn in there. Uh, we are going to go to a bunch of different places today, but I'm going to start in Philippians chapter 3, and we'll get there in just a couple moments. But uh, at, at per usual, uh, I like to do a couple things up front, up first, and up close. And if you're new or recent with us, you're checking us out. We're so glad that you're online with us this morning. You know, we were talking uh, before we came on live stream that, you know, this is one of the benefits, right? This is one of the things that COVID brought us, right? The ability to live stream so well, to, to be, I remember a snow day early on in my ministry in Maine where I was sitting at my dining room table. My entire family had to be quiet because I was on my laptop live streaming from my dining room table a message uh, during a snow day, right? And so... Uh, it, this this is this is way better. This is much better quality, and uh, we're so glad um, that you joined us this morning. I'm thankful for the folks that got here and uh, made this possible. Um, with great attitudes, they came and made this possible, and so I'm thankful uh, for that. Um, we have uh, an amazing group of people here called Summit Church. A couple things for you this morning. I mentioned last week, and we had uh, 10 Bibles. I'm going to talk more about this at the end of today, but we had 10 of these Bibles. Now, this is the Bible that I use every year. Um, it's a journaling Bible. Uh, it's the version that I preach from, all of that. We had 10 of these. They went quick, and so we ordered 10 more. Um, so, uh, And I had one uh, left over in my office. Um, that I tried to give somebody, and and they gave it they gave it back to me because they needed a larger print. And so I've got ten more of these Bibles. If you uh, want one of these, you can put it in the chat. You can email me Travis at summitmain dot org. Um, if this serves you, I will put your name on one. We'll hold it for you. Um, but wanted to let you know we've got ten more of these um, to uh, for you if the, if that helps you out. All right. Um, so today. We started something last year um, for the first three Sundays of the year following Christmas, right? So last Sunday, the Sunday in between Christmas and New Year's. Today, which is the first Sunday in 2024, I feel like I haven't seen you in a whole year since last year um, and, and still haven't. And so I'll tell that joke again next Sunday and it'll be just as good. Um, you have something to look forward to. Uh, and then next Sunday um, is going to be a really special day, but we started this to kind of get back to basics, right? And to talk about why it is that Summit exists, right? And we exist to know, love, follow Jesus, and help others do the same. And so we make much of that the first three Sundays of the year. We do that by last Sunday talking about the priority of Scripture in the life of the believer. Because if we're going to know, love, follow Jesus, and help others do the same, we've got to know Jesus, right? We've got to plug in with Jesus. And we're going to talk all about that this morning. And um, so I had, a, I had a whole message prepared around our vision statement and was really, was really bummed out, was really holding out that this snowstorm was going to be a fluke and that we could all gather together this morning because I think some of the things that God wants to say to us on the second half of this message is just huge and very important in the life of Summit right now. And so I'm going to cut this message in half um, because you're on your couch and, and, uh, or, or wherever you are and, and it's snowing outside and all of those things. And so we're going to cut this message in half and I'll finish it next Sunday on uh, a, a very special day that you're not going to want to miss. Um, and I don't want to tease it out too much, um, but, uh, but it's going to be a good day. So 
we're in kind of a three-week vision series, kind of foundational series, basic series of just getting back to basics. And then two weeks from today, uh, we will jump back into Colossians and we'll finish the book of Colossians together that we started back in the fall. And so really looking forward to what's ahead and um, engaging in the scriptures uh, with you in that way. So again, Happy New Year. Glad that you are here. Uh, plug in on our website and the app if you don't have the app for all of the upcoming events. I think the last thing I'll say before I dive into um, our, our, our message this morning is this. No youth group tonight. Um, students, go sledding. Uh, go get in a snowball fight with your parents. Um, do, do something uh, special and fun. Get your homework done. Get ready for school tomorrow. All those different things. And um, But we will not have a youth group tonight. So, uh, Philippians chapter 3, again, go there, and again, no love, follow Jesus, help others do the same. So this morning, I want us to look at what it is to know, to love, and to follow Jesus. All right, let's pray together, because when I was praying, my mic wasn't working, so let's just pray together as we look at God's Word. God, we give you the day. We thank you for the technology and the people that are making this possible. And God, I, I, I thank you that that today is what we've deemed Lord's Day, right? Your day. And God, that's why we go through such efforts to gather. It's not to make much of us. It's not, it's not that we can't go a day without, uh, a, a week without having a church service at Summit. But God, I pray for the mentality in the heart of a group of people that can't go a week without, quote unquote, gathering with your church. Because God, this is so vital to what we do. This is so vital to who we are. God, that we gather, that your people who call themselves your sons, your daughters, gather. And so God, thank you for the technology, the ways that you've made this possible. And I pray that as we look at your word this morning, as we hear these things, God, that we be challenged wherever we're at, that we be challenged in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. To know, to love, and to follow Jesus. I was coaching this week uh, at a basketball practice for um, one of one of the Littles teams. Um, and so we had a bunch of first, second, third grade fourth grade boys and girls out on the basketball court they were practicing and I was demonstrating something and I was showing them how to do something on the basketball court and I looked at them all and I said now do you understand that do you get that and they all kind of you know nodded and said yeah yes coach I, I get it kind of like you nod on a Sunday morning when I ask you if you get it and you have no clue what I'm talking about Okay, and, uh, and so these, these kids, kind of, yes, coach, I, you know, I, I, I get it. Can we scrimmage now, or can we have a water break, or can I go do a couple cartwheels, or something like that, right? And one of the assistant coaches jumped in and, and, said, and said, hey, coach, can I, can, I, can I clarify something? I said, of course, of course, go ahead, coach. And he jumped in, and he said, I like to know when I'm doing something the why behind what I'm doing. I like to know when I'm doing something the why behind what I'm doing. I was like, yes, that's awesome. Because I like to know that too, right? I like to know the why behind what I'm doing, right? Um, and, and so it's important for us sometimes to stop and to remember why it is we do what we do. Because if not, then we just get stuck in routines, we get stuck in ruts, and all of these things become mundane, they become, they become not exciting anymore, they just become something we do, they become boxes that we check and we forget the why behind what we're doing. And that's the importance of stopping and looking back at why we exist, but also, as we talk about the importance of the scripture in the life of the believer last week, why? Why is the Bible so important? important in my life? Why is plugging into the scriptures and why is, is doing a Bible reading plan and why, why should that be a priority in my life? Well, I'm really glad that you've thought about that all week because I'm sure you have. I'm sure you have. And I'm glad that you asked that question um, this morning. And so, again, to know, to love, to follow Jesus. So to know, that's the first one, to know Jesus. That's our first point today right? As, as part of our vision statement, to know 
Jesus. Now to know someone is to have developed a relationship with someone, right? To know someone is to have developed a relationship with someone, right? And so uh, you do that through meeting someone and then spending time with them, right? Meeting someone and spending time with them. I was, um, I was in an airport one time and, uh, oh, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, 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 <laughs> big NASCAR owner, used to own a football team. Uh, Joe Gibbs, thank you. All right, Joe Gibbs. Nobody came up with that in here, but my, my mind came up with it. But I was, I was in an airport one time in Charlotte, North Carolina. I was flying back to Portland, Maine. And I, I looked to my side, and there was Joe Gibbs, right? Used to own the Washington football team and, and uh, owns Gibbs Racing. If you're a NASCAR fan, it's a bunch of guys turning left, but that's okay. Uh, a lot of people like it. Um, it's good nap time, and uh, and and I looked at I looked to my side, and there's Joe Gibbs, and I went up to him, and I said, Joe Gibbs, and he said, Yeah, you know who are you? And I told him I was a pastor in Maine because I thought he would care, and you know all these different things, right? And so we we had about a three minute conversation, and so guess what? I know Joe Gibbs, right? I know Joe Gibbs. I have a relationship now with Joe Gibbs. I'm sure that if I had Joe Gibbs' number which we didn't exchange numbers, hashtag missed opportunity, right? That if I had his number, I could call him up right now and he would remember me. Not a chance, right? A lot of times we assume or we presume that we know people that we really don't know. Because when it comes to knowing someone, it, it means to have developed, to have a developed a standing relationship through meeting and spending time with someone. Spending time with someone. To be familiar or friendly with someone. And so when we talk about knowing Jesus at Summit Church, we want you to plug into the life of Jesus. We want you to know Jesus. We want you to spend time with Jesus. We want you to familiarize yourself with Jesus. We have a whole reading plan for 2024 that is the Gospels, that is the life of Jesus, so that you could know and plug into and be familiar with everything, uh, uh, with all of who Jesus is. John 17, 3, as Jesus is praying to his Father, he's on his way to the cross, and, and he says this, and he says, this is eternal life, John 17, 3, that they, they being, because they being, he pray, prays for three groups of people in that, in that prayer, his disciples, himself, and all of those who would believe, and so in all of those who would believe, he's praying for every believer who ever will and ever was and, and all of that. So he's including us in that prayer, and he's saying, and this is eternal life, that they, us, may know you. That they know you. This is eternal life, that they know you, that they spend time with you, that they familiarize themselves with you. The only true God and Jesus Christ himself whom you've sent, that they may know you. The whole purpose of the life of Jesus was that they may know you. You get that? You see that? Jesus came that we may know God, that we may know God. What a huge verse, that they may know God. And so listen to me. If you're listening to this, if you're watching this this morning, later on, months down the road, years down the road, all of this, all that we do as believers, church, small groups, Bible reading plans, uh, discipleship, ev everything, that, everything that we do is that we may know God. That's huge. Paul says it to the church of Philippi in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. But whatever I gain, whatever gain I had, excuse me, I count it as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of, here it is, knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Everything is loss. Everything is loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake, I've suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law and ritual or religion, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. Here it is again, verse 10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and may share 
his sufferings. Snow on a Sunday morning. Becoming like him in his death. That by any means possible, by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Now, Paul's a little intense with his language sometimes. But he's, he is so because I believe when I read this that he believes it. There is nothing greater. There is nothing greater than the surpassing knowledge of no, the surpassing worth of knowing knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Nothing. Nothing. Look at your neighbor in your living room and say, nothing. Nothing else matters when it comes to comparison of knowing Jesus. When it comes to knowing Jesus. And here's, and here's another thing, right? Here's another thing. We never arrive at knowing someone completely, do we? This side of heaven. We never arrive at knowing someone completely this side of heaven, right? Chris and I have been together uh, 19 and a half years. Uh, September of this year will be 20 years that we've known each other, or August, excuse me, we started dating in September. It'll be 20 years that I've spent, like, I'm not sure there's a day in, in 19 and a half years that I haven't at least talked or had a conversation with Kristen. But there, are, there was still a moment this past week where I learned something brand new about my wife, right? And I was fascinated. I was enamored by the fact that I learned something new about Kristen, right? And as people grow and as people change, right, things change about them, right? And so it's always incredible to continue learning about the people that you're close to, right? And in Isaiah 55, we see that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth are his thoughts than our thoughts. So there are things about God that we will not know, that we will not comprehend, that we will not get this side of heaven, right? And so it is fascinating. It is, it is incredible to continue the pursuit of knowing God, Jeremiah 31 puts it this way. For this is the covenant that I will make with those of the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. You see the expectation of God? that they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter your background. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. This is the point, that we would know Him, that we would know Him. Now, let's talk about love. Or, as we talked about on Christmas Eve, love, right? That we would love Jesus, that we would love him, right? Uh, to love in this context is to feel, is to feel a deep affection for, right? To feel a deep affection for. First John, excuse me, First John 4.19 says this, we love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. It is the natural response. Again, it is the natural expectation Right? in response to being a child of God, that we would love Him. That we would feel a deep affection. Why? Because He first loved us and went through great lengths to love us. Let's create a way to know His Father. We love because He first loved us. Proverbs eight seventeen says this, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Isn't that awesome? I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. So we love because He first loved us. And here's the deal. It's like knowing Him, right? We never reach a cap on loving Christ. We never reach a cap on loving Christ. I was 
reflecting on this this past week and just thinking as I'm as I'm reading the Bible through and I'm reading the 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 um the the creation story right and then you read in the gospels about how people saw Jesus they were following Jesus they they were told about Jesus and 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 it says immediately they cast their nets right immediately they felt an affection right and I was thinking about how uh because I, I, I always like to think about how that applies to me and I was thinking about how you know some people are just easier to love than others amen I mean it's okay because you you might be in you might you might be sitting in the midst right now of some people that 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 are harder than to love than others right harder bless their hearts bless their hearts right um but but especially I'll, I'll be honest with you i'll be honest with you when this stuff is falling from the sky that's white and it accumulates on the ground right i'm a harder person to love in moments like this and days like this it's it's inconvenient it was fun for the first 10 years i'm gonna be honest with you i it was fun i enjoyed the wet feet right i enjoyed the the taking two or three different pairs of shoes with you everywhere you went so that you could change right i enjoyed the bundling up i enjoyed cleaning the cars off i enjoyed right i enjoyed it now it's death. No, I'm just kidding. It's not probably not death, right? But it's just it's super inconvenient, right? It's super inconvenient, right? And I'm a harder person to love when I wake up to mornings like this, right? I'm a harder person to love. Now, if I could sit and cozy up and 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 not, you know, not I oh, in the and and I wouldn't have to shovel it later, you know, or wouldn't have to, you know, wouldn't have to do anything. If I didn't have to do anything with it, and I could just be awesome right? But it's super inconvenient to have to move about and to have to move, move, period, right? I'm a harder person to love. And so some people are harder to love than others in certain seasons. Some people are harder to love than others in certain circumstances, right? High pressure situations, right? You, you, you don't know, you, you don't truly know someone, like I was talking about on Christmas Eve, my friend at the, at the airport, um, when the, when the, when the shuttle, uh, didn't, didn't work out the way it intended, right? I saw a different side of my friend that night. I still loved him, Right, but he was, but he was a different person in that moment, and honestly, harder to love. Right, and so if we're honest with ourselves, all I'm saying in that is that if we're honest with ourselves, we are harder to love at times than others. We're harder to love at times than others, and I think if we're honest with ourselves, because here's the reality. We don't change, but the circumstances change, right? In my life, I have found it is harder to feel a deeper affection for Jesus at times than others. When I walk into a room where something has happened, a circumstance has happened, a situation has happened, oh, my sermon just disappeared. Oh, oh, okay. Well, oh, okay, here we go. Right when I walk into a room and there's a situation or a circumstance that I can't understand, that I can't explain, why in the world would this little boy be experiencing this? Why in the world would this family go through this loss at this time when it doesn't when it doesn't make sense to me? Right? It is harder for me to feel to feel. It doesn't mean that God has changed. It doesn't mean that my status or my relationship status with God has changed. But it's harder for me to feel a deeper affection with Jesus, for Jesus, in that moment, right? But I still love Him. But I still love Him. No matter what, I love Him. And we're going to sing about it in just a minute. No matter what, I love Him. And He's good. And He's good. And I remember later, maybe not in the moment, that God allows that, that which he hates to accomplish that which he loves. And so everything, every situation, every circumstance, every unexplainable moment, God uses in me to produce in me a deeper love and a deeper affection and a deeper appreciation for the person and work of Jesus. And so my prayer today is not only that you be stirred to know him more, to 
to build a relationship, to spend time, but to love and to feel a deep affection because he first loved you. He went to the cross for you. He was born for you. He stepped out of glory. He had everything. He stepped out of heaven for you so that you may know him, so that you may love him. And then thirdly, that you may follow him. Now, the definition for the word follow is this. And, 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 and if, you've ever, if you've ever played the game, right, follow the leader or Simon says or something like that, right, you, you kind of get this, right? But to follow, here, here's a fascinating piece of this definition. To follow is to move. So it involves action, right? You can't follow somebody when you're sitting on the couch, right? And, and this is going to build really well. And we're going to stop here in just a moment. My prayer is that you're on such a cliffhanger that you're so frustrated and you put in the comments, right? And you're just, and you're so frustrated that you just can't wait to get here next Sunday to hear what God has to say to you. That's my prayer for you. You're welcome. But to move, because moving involves action, to move behind someone. To move behind someone. Can I, can I be honest with you for a second? I think we've become, as a people, just as a people, really, um, we found this idea of following, to move behind someone, a really big struggle lately. That's the best way to put it. We struggle following someone. You know why? Because, because I believe that we have adopted this mentality that we constantly always know a better way to lead. It is easy, it is easy for us to be critical and to find uh, uh, um, validation in our way to go way more than someone else, right? But to follow Jesus means to go after Jesus. We say it all the time around here, to be following so close to Jesus that we're covered in the dust that he kicks up off his feet. Or today, it would be the snow that he would kick up off his feet. That we're covered in wet because we're so close to Jesus walking in the snow. Right? But when we look at the scriptures for following Jesus, I look at John 3.16. The gospel, as I read John 3.16 yesterday, um, in my Bible, I just wrote in the margin, gospel. For God so loved the world, all, all of us. For God so loved the world, every nation, every tribe, every people, every race. Every, for God so loved the world that he gave. He, he, we love because he first loved us, that he gave. His one and only son. Now whosoever, and here it is, believes in him. Whosoever believes in Him, whosoever believes in Him, whoever follows Him, whoever trusts Him, would not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believe in Him, whoever follow Him, whoever pursue after Him, would not perish, but have everlasting life. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this, love this verse, you will seek Me and you will find Me when you seek me with all your heart. And so this isn't a, this isn't a, yeah, I'll, I'll follow for a little bit. Commitment, right? This isn't, this isn't a, this isn't a, well, well, I'm in a desperate season, right? I'm in a desperate season. So I'll, I'll follow, I'll follow for the season, but, but then when things get better, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll just go back to my own way. No, this is a, I'm going to follow him with everything I've got. You will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with your whole, whole heart. And so, when it comes to knowing, loving, and following Jesus, there's a surrender. There's a surrender to the fact that God knows better than I do. Right? That that I love because he first loved me. No matter the circumstances, I'm going to feel a deep affection, even, even when I don't understand. 
even when it's inconvenient for me to feel a deep affection, I'm going to choose to, to have a deep affection for the things of God. And then a follow. I'm going to move after him. And I'm, gonna, I'm not only going to move after him temporarily. I'm not gonna, only going to move after him as long as he's pleasing me and, and, and as long as everything feels good and, and, and all of that. But I'm going to move after him when it's hard. I'm going to move after him when it's inconvenient. I'm going to move after him because I want to seek him with all my heart because that's when I find him. Because that's when I find him. We say it around here all the time that God meets us at the level of our expectation. What is your expectation? What is your expectancy today around the pursuit of God? Why did you even jump onto this live stream? Why did we even show up here and, and come to the church this morning to do this live stream? Because we believe, we expect God to move through, through these moments. And we want you to experience it. This is not a casual vision statement. This is not a casual Sunday. This is not a this is this is not a casual lifestyle that that we that we involve ourselves in or choose to just to be a part of a group of people. This is a life changing move of God among us that calls us. There's an expectancy in all of these verses that I read. If you look at if you look back at, at knowing and this is eternal life that they know you the only true God. That is definitive. That is an expectancy that they know you. The expectancy there is that we would know Him, the only true God. You look at love. We love because He first loved us. Not, not we love when it feels good because He first loved There is nothing after that. The expectancy in the life of the believer is that we love Him because He first loved us, Period. 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 Nothing else. Nothing else. And then follow. You will seek me and you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart. For God so loved the world that whoever believes, the expectation there, believes, will not perish, but have everlasting life. Will not perish, but have everlasting life. So hear me. When it comes to the priority of Scripture in the life of the believer, Worship team, you guys can come back. When it comes to those things, when it comes to last Sunday and us doing a call with all these Bible reading plans and, and giving out these Bibles and all of those, all these different things, right, which we have these, these Bible reading plans. And listen, it's, it's not too late to catch up. It's not too late to catch up. These are out in our lobby all week. You can swing by here. You can grab one of these. I'd love to even talk you through. I think we've got five or six of them. I'd love to even talk you through based on where you're at. What the, what the best is for you? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I'm doing, and and some of you are going to think overachiever or show off or whatever. But that's that's not the point. I'll tell you why I'm doing it. I'm doing the Old Testament and the New Testament because that's the rhythm that I've found just really works for me. Because I'm not reading the Bible to to sermon prep. There's a, there's something for me every day, and I want to do it consistently. And I want to do that every year. And and I've added this year, our uh, the, the summits original gospel plan because I want to walk through the gospels in a different way. Well, Pastor Travis, you're already reading the gospels in, in the New Testament plan. I know. Isn't that awesome? But I wanted to read it in the way that, that, that we structured it with John first and then Mark. And then I want to go through Acts again because I want to, I want to focus on the local church. And then I look forward to next fall when we walk through the Gospels uh, chronologically. And so I'm, right now I'm doing all three. I'm up to date, all those things, pat on the back, all those different things, right? But that's, that's what I feel like God has led me to do this year, right? But that may not be the case for you, but the reason being, the reason we make so much of this, the reason we want to call you and, and make it as easy as we possibly can for you to engage with the Scriptures is because we want the expectancy around here at Summit to be that you're knowing Jesus, that you're engaging in a relationship with Him. You're learning about Him as much as you possibly can. That you are loving Him by developing a deep affection for the person and work of Christ because you're seeing the importance from Genesis to Revelation about, uh, uh, of Him in your life and of Him to the world, which we'll talk about next week. And we want you to follow Him with everything you've got. You will seek me. You will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. And so base, last thing I want to say is that I believe moves of God happen 
when we make him the priority. And so all this is, knowing, loving, following Jesus, is placing him as first priority in our life. So my question for you this morning, wherever you're at, what's, what's got first priority in your life? What's got first priority in your life? Is first priority in your life you? Right? Your happiness, your, 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 your feel-good mentality, your, you know, your sustenance, all, all those different things. Is your first priority in your life you? And I, I, I'll be honest, I think for, for most of us, that, that's probably the answer, that our first priority is me. What does it look like to make Jesus the first priority of your life? What does it look like? And would you consider today making one change today, right now, about your attitude, about your mentality, about your, about maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's reading through the Bible. Last week you weren't sure, but, but this week, okay, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it, Pastor Travis. Right? Whatever, whatever the case may be, would you consider making one change towards making Jesus the first priority of your life, knowing him, loving him, pursuing him, following him? Would you consider that? And next week, we'll hit in the second half of this passage, or the second half of our vision helping others do the same. Let's pray. God, today, I thank you that we get to know you. I thank you that we get to love you. I thank you that we get to follow you, pursue you with everything in us. And God, I thank you that you're there. I thank you that you're a personal God that loves us and hears us when we pray and wants our affection, wants our attention, wants us to follow. And so, God, I pray today that you would give us the boldness, the mentality, the attitude to make you more of a priority in our lives, first priority in our lives, not us, you. In fact, Jesus said, more of you, Father, less of me. And so I pray that for each and every one of us watching this, each and every one of us in the room. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.